Okay, I've got the Quanta Charger on the bench today, and as I've stated before, there are just absolutely endless configurations to this machine. This is a new one. Uh, this here, with all the wires, uh, they're all labeled. Uh, this, this is coil set A. Uh, it's A on one side, one on the other, and then it goes B, C, D, E, and F. On the other side, it's one, two, three, through six. And each one is a coil pair, and that pair corresponds to six individual bridge rectifiers here. So with this kind of a wiring and labeling, you know exactly what coil is doing what at any given point in time. It's really great. You're, you're able to track everything. But, um, but the nicest thing about it is they're all independent circuits with this setup here and so that you can choose to disable some, you can have two opposing ones, you can have three triangulated, uh, you can have all six. Now this particular setup here, I've got the rotor with the six positions, and what happens is this is, this is a new setup here. Uh, it's, a, it's a commutator, it's mechanical. Now of course I could use a Hall effect sensor or, or you know, uh, several other different options to, to trigger this. But uh, it's just a mechanical switch, and it's very, very light, like a like a hair trigger. There are six positions on the on the rotor here, and it just bumps it for a tiny fractional second. And uh, what it does is it triggers the power from this little rechargeable nickel metal hydride battery, which is charged by this coil inside, actually sitting on the outside of this internal coil here. So when this coil is activated, you get some mutual inductance, plus you get a magnetic field, plus there's a, a, a small steel uh, inner ring uh, just on the inside of the green coil inside here. The wire coming down for the positive goes through a diode, so you get nothing but positive. On the negative side, it's, a, it's an alternating current. So it's very interesting. I've been using the same battery in my prototype for about seven years, and it has... Uh, yet to drop below uh, full charge in seven years time. So it's lasted a long time and it's always topped off at full charge because of this configuration of wiring. So it's very, very interesting. And so uh, this runs at about 600 RPM. I'll start it in just a second here. And uh, so you're getting, you're actually getting 60 pulses per second on this. So what we're gonna do uh, with this configuration, this is actually a motor generator which is very similar to the rotoverter here, uh, in which case it, it has uh, a lot of torque and it produces uh, extra energy. And this particular setup produces both uh, back EMF uh, through these output wires here, and you get a boost of inductance at the same time. So you're getting, you're getting the high voltage spikes of the back EMF through this, plus you're getting some amperage uh, as a kicker, so uh, that doesn't hurt. And uh, so it charges batteries even better. Uh, it's, a, it's a very cool system. It runs on very uh, low milliamps, and, um, and I'm going to show you that too. This machine will actually reach maximum torque on the very first pulse. How can that be? Because we've got six coil pair sets in here. So in other words, there's 12 coils. Uh, the, the rotor has big three quarter inch thick N52 magnets. And of course there's a north pole and a south pole on the magnets. So these coils are set up to be north when they're pulsed. There's north on one side, south on the other side. So every time that magnet hits top dead center, that thing pulses a double pulse, a double repulsion, no, I'm sorry, not a double pulse, but a double repulsion, north on north, south on south, and it shoots that magnet out like a bullet, times six. Every one of these are activated simultaneously, and so the torque, you, you, you can hold the shaft on the other side where there's more shaft, and it'll just rip it right out of your hands. It's got a lot of torque. It's pretty amazing. So this thing can run stuff, and you can harvest the back EMF and charge a bank of batteries, very simple to do, so this is a fantastic configuration, and um, like I said, it, it takes, uh, oh, to hit maximum speed takes about two seconds, maybe two and a half seconds, and it's, it's up to top speed, which in this particular configuration 
is about uh, 600 RPM at 24 volts. I like 24 volts because it gives you a little higher RPM and uh, it still gives you, you know, a nice, uh, a nice amount of speed to work with to run something else that you can, you can gear or, or whatever you want to do. Okay, I've, I've just connected the input wires here. That's, this is for the input and again that's for your output for your electrical anyway and you have a, a tremendous considerable uh, thrust vector on this thing too so you have that because of that bipolar pulsing uh, action it's it's really incredible we're going to start it now and watch how fast this just totally spins up and all I have to do is practically breathe on this thing and it's just up there it is see about two seconds it, it's a top speed listen to it super quiet and yet you have all that's kind of like the rotover it's real quiet but it has a lot of torque a lot of power and it provides uh, uh, an electrical output to boot what can be better if you already own one of these kits if you built this kit uh, this new configuration will be shown on our or will provide it to you on our website and uh, also with the switching set up here uh, again, you could use a Hall Effect switch if you want, but uh, I try to keep things as simple as possible. The most sophisticated electronics on this whole machine, regardless of, of how you're using it, is just this solid-state relay and six bridge rectifiers. Big deal. So, you know, there's, uh, there, of course, there's field effect transistors inside this uh, bridge rec or, or inside the solid-state relay. You know, this is the, the switch side activated by... Uh, the charged up battery here through the switching here so it just gets a you know a 9 volt uh, uh, pulse it can handle up to 32 volts to operate the switch and then the contacts here are for the load that's coming in and they operate on the negative so that it can go the back EMF can go through the bridge rectifiers and come out as that positive spike and out these wires uh, engaging all 12 coils simultaneously while you're doing that. So, uh, pretty incredible machine. Listen to that quiet operation. It's a beautiful thing. So, there's, like I said, again, you know, there's so many different configurations. Now, imagine this. Uh, it, you won't have to imagine it because you'll soon see uh, this machine hooked up to the rotoverter and I'll probably power the rotoverter up and pull power off of it to charge batteries plus it will be running this while this is also being pulsed reducing the drag on the rotoverter reducing the amount of input needed to run the rotoverter and yet boosting the inductance on this and still getting your back EMF so that hasn't been done before uh, at least not in a configuration like this and this whole thing is uh, pretty new you're, you're seeing something uh, real unusual here for the first time. There's no there's no cores on these. There's all air core. You don't want that because it's just going to slow down your rotor. It's it's absolutely not needed. In fact, all these bolts are plastic. Everything. The only extra metal I have is that little thin ring of steel inside that uh, green coil there, just to enhance that uh, magnetic field to give enough power to do its thing to keep that topped off at at all times. There it is. Again, uh, check our website if you own one and you want the, the circuit to do this, to, to rewire it in, in that configuration. It's real simple. I'll show you how there's pictures, uh, there'll be pictures in there of, of how to join those wires together to keep them all grouped together nice and tight like that. It's, uh, it's quite easy to do. One final point here, again I said that the input power is 24 volts here, and I want to show you, I've got it connected to the ammeter, if I can get that reflection off of it, and if you can see that, this, this camera is not uh, very good for close-ups, but it's pulling about uh, 250 milliamps to maybe 300 milliamps at 24 volts to give you the incredible amount of torque and extra charging capability. Here's the other side. There's the output shaft side. This is the side that will connect to the rotoverter. I'd also like to mention that uh, 
I believe that because of the way this system is wired up, it may be it may be feeding a little power back into the batteries because on its own, just like this, and uh, extracting some back EMF and with the induction. And, and if you don't want the induction, you can just connect to the positive input line or to the positive of your of your drive battery, and uh, connect that. Um, to the negative of your charging batteries if you've got a single battery or a bank of batteries and then just take this positive lead and go to directly to the to the positive connection of your of your uh, charging bank but uh, it may be feeding some power back into that run battery even though it's hardly drawing anything at you know 250 to, to 300 milliamps here uh, at 24 volts in this particular power input uh, because it, it just it'll run for hours, and uh, I suppose it's possibly because that input is so low, but it'll run for hours and, and maybe drop one one hundredth of a of a volt uh, of the uh, batteries that are that are powering it. So uh, pretty incredible, you know, just to, even at that to get the kind of torque, and even under full load. A load so heavy that it just about stops that shaft from rotating, and that takes a lot to do that. It still ends up only pulling about two amps maximum on the ammeter at 24 volts. So you're talking about 48 watts to do a lot of work and get power output. So uh, I'm quite certain that the COP is very high on this configuration. Thanks a lot.